Welcome to module two. Here we're going to go over some core concepts to get us started before we even jump into the actual build out of the application. So we have four lessons in this module. The first is understanding software solutions. The second is creating and defining an outcome and success criteria for our application. The third lesson is going through the niche assessment and feasibility. And lesson four is testing for uniqueness for our software. So let's jump right in on understanding software solutions. So at its core, a software solution is a technical solution to solve or reduce a problem. Remember, you don't have to necessarily completely eliminate the problem. There's a lot of value in reducing the pain that a problem causes. Um, a lot of the software that, that I build focuses on reduction of a problem rather than necessarily eliminating it because it's much easier uh, to take something that, you know, say a process that takes a, a company five days to do and you can reduce it down to one day. There's a ton of value in that Obviously, if you could take that five-day process and turn it into something that you know nobody has to even think about, that's the best type of solution. But you know, just know that there's still a huge margin for profiting off of reducing a problem if you can reduce it, you know, by a significant amount. So you know, if you take that five-day process and you say it's going to be you know four days and seven hours, uh, it's not necessarily going to be something that people are going to jump through hoops to buy versus um, you know, taking a, a five-day process and cutting it in half or cutting it down to a day or a couple of hours, et cetera. The next concept that I want to talk through is that there are various levels of you know technical nature. So when I say technical, um, you know, I just want you to know that it's not just a matter of coding and building this you know, beautiful looking application with fancy user interface. Um, you know, obviously that's one type of technical solution, but you can have much simpler solutions in there as well. Like for example, you know, macros in, in Excel, where you click a button or hit a hotkey and you know, now your template gets filled out, right? Uh, web hooks, uh, so if anyone's using a Zapier or any automation there, you know, that, that can be a, a technical solution to a problem, even though a lot of, you know, the web hooks that you build are, you know, fill out a, a template or a form rather than, you know, actually coding step one, do this, step two, do that, and here's the code behind it. Um, you know, and it can be very simple, even like a formula driven Excel spreadsheet where, you know, if you have your formulas set up to, you know, significantly reduce various tasks, then there can be a huge value over there as well. Uh, many of my, uh, like, enterprise software that I have built out started as an Excel spreadsheet with some formulas. Um, you know, mapping out a solution there can be a great starting point for you as, you know, you're hiring developers and you want to show them here's what should happen, it, it's it's great to, to give an Excel spreadsheet and, you know, say, hey, look, build a, a web application that replicates this, this core logic. Now, how technical your end solution is, is going to vary across a number of different factors. So one of those is protectability. And, and when I say that, I mean that you know, if you give it somebody an Excel spreadsheet, um, obviously they can see all the formulas behind everything and it's something that can be replicated. Um, you know, it's not necessarily something that you can charge a subscription for because uh, once they, you know, make the initial purchase, they have all the formulas behind, uh, you know, the, they have all the magic uh, that, that makes your spreadsheet work. So they could just stop paying and they still have all of the, um, the, the formulas behind it. Now you, you can um, protect spreadsheets and you know password protected. It, it's not very secure. There are a lot of tutorials out there on the internet on how to you know bypass Excel uh, security. 
there are other um, you know programming languages if you're writing code where you know your source code right the the code that um, you know the files that that have the code behind them are in plain text for anyone to be able to open that file and see the code behind it so just because you're uh, quote unquote coding a solution doesn't necessarily mean that that it's more protectable um, you know that way so if you're going and giving these uh, scripts and files to a customer and they can go and view it again this isn't something that you're going to be able to charge a subscription for because once they get the code they, they have the code um, and they don't have to pay you for it anymore versus there's you know compiled software so like software like for example you know microsoft office where it's an executable where it's you can't just right click and and do open and see the code behind it um, you know are the most protectable type of software out there is cloud-based software where you're hosting the solution and you have the code that's on your servers now that's not something that that somebody can go and and decompile because they don't have access to the files that that contain your code so we'll get into more of that later on in this course but just wanted to make you aware of that you know also accessibility and versioning so how is this going to be accessed by the customer is this a one-time download that that they have are you going to be releasing updates over time if you are releasing updates how are those updates going to be given to the user are they going to have to download new files do you want it to automatically update for them these are all things that you'll need to take into consideration as you're you know creating your requirements and mapping out what your solution is going to look like the third item is features um, obviously there are more features that you can include in a solution that you're custom coding versus uh, excel for example and in something like excel you have to work within the boundaries and limitations that Excel has versus when you're coding something, you know, really the sky's the limit in terms of what you can do. Um, lastly, we have security. And with security, uh, again, it, it's a matter of how are you protecting not only the code, but access inside your application. If you're creating an application there's going to be different levels of permissioning um, in there. That's not something that you can do with just you know, a macro or an Excel spreadsheet versus you know, something like that. You would probably have to write a, a custom coded application. So as you're going through, just think of all these factors. Um, you know, and, and when I and when I say security, it's not even just user access. That's part of it. There's also data access. You have to protect. Um, you know, certain uh, data elements that are going to be in your application. You know, there, there are a lot of different factors that feed into security as well. So, um, you know, just keep these concepts in mind as we go through the remainder of the course. We're going to be referencing, you know, many of these, uh, many of these bullets that we have on the slide.